What is up, homies? Welcome back to another episode of the Chexicans Podcast. Hope you're all having a fantastic evening. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not an April Fool's joke. We are, in fact, live today. It's a Monday. Yeah. We know. Right. It's weird. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very weird. <laughs> but Hector, you're um, no you're sound. going somewhere. No sound. Hold. Mm. Oh, oh. Unless oh. Wesley needs to just ads. Oh. Ads. Oh, e Ooh, ah. Adjusting dial accordingly. Yo, everybody can hear Unless us. Unless. Wesley Thumbs needs up, to good? Okay. unmute us. There you know why there was sound. no sound? Because we hadn't right. cut into our picture yet. Mm, that's why, dang. folks. Okay, that's why it said B-Ride back. Down. That's why. Oh, weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, unmute, you, okay. unmute your computer? I don't know. Yes. Is there, is there sound now? Me, it was me, says Wesley. Me, yeah. it was yeah. me. Okay. Wes, oh, stop Wes. fucking Someone, up my stream. Everything was, was fine. Nice. Now he you send nervous. everyone into a panic. He was it's fine. Thanks, Wes. Jesus, Wes. Jesus. He's all, ah, no sound, guys. No, it's okay. It's okay, Wes. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Anyways, Thank today is Monday. We're streaming on a Monday. This is unusual for us. We normally stream on Wednesdays, but mm -hmm. like I was mentioning, Hector is going out of town. Uh, My fault. This week, and he'll be gone for two weeks, basically. So we figured, mm -hmm. ah, we'll do mm -hmm. one more. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. We'll squeeze one. We'll squeeze I, one in. Yeah. I'll be back. Um, so I'm gone next week. And then the week after, I'll be back for our regularly scheduled time. I'll mm -hmm, be back mm -hmm. Monday, which means so that's Tuesday and Wednesday. To everything. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Is, yeah are we there talked about that yet? That you're gonna that you're gonna miss Hector. Do you want to let people know well, or not? Nah? We haven't talked about that yet because I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna miss Invincible because we uh -huh. have seen all of season two. Thank God, and it was mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's an X Men coming out this week, one next week, and then the week after. So if you guys wanted to watch the one next week without me, you could. I don't think I'll have the capability to chime in from New Zealand and record a from reaction. From 22 hours in the future? Yeah, I won't have that. So yeah. if you guys wanted to watch it without me, you can. If you wanted to wait a week, a few days, uh, half of a week, um, you can. And then I can watch it with you guys when I get back. It's up to you guys. But that oh, show is a banger. A I would not blame you guys. I would not blame tough. you guys. Yeah. No, I know, <laughs> and I know, I know. And I'll say that because I literally just watched all three episodes again with my wife. And it's yeah. it's so good. It's so, so good. It is. Episode one it was kind of shaky. The writing in episode two got her. I said, gotcha. Mm. <laughs> you said like what? Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I'm not gotcha. gonna finish that sentence. Got your wife. Okay, okay, yeah, gotcha. okay. Got your wife. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we yeah. finished Invincible. I would say I don't know. It's been about five days. I think we finished it. Yeah, maybe maybe a week. Maybe a week at this mm -hmm. point. It was really good. We did talk about. Um, we have talked about some of the videos. How you know the social media sort of. Uh, conversation around that show is a lot lesser than it was for the previous season mm -hmm. but you know whatever that is what it is i hope they come back with season with season three like in its entirety and not broken up but it's been really great we've been putting those reactions out every day and mm -hmm. by the time we get to the finale we'll be completely caught up in real time so that'll be really mm -hmm. cool yeah. um what else yeah we're doing x-men and plenty of there's like there's just so many things happening back burner mm -hmm. stuff we got we got yeah. enough burners yeah. going to 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 keep the entire fire department of los angeles county uh employed so <laughs> on call on call pretty much everything. yeah so we yeah. did see the invincible finale we saw it about a week ago so but obviously mm -hmm. we're not talking yeah. about it on social media or publicly because we can't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you'll have to you'll so have to tune in wait. on thursday to find out what we what we think yeah. about the show well yeah. one thing before we get too geeky is i hector i want to Good. know your plans in new zealand have you guys oh, finalized sure. plans? Like, are you guys gonna go yes. to Hobbiton for sure, and like, gonna go see all the cool that's, stuff? Yeah, that's part of the plan, and I haven't okay, done that. Okay, so I'm really, really excited. I only went to New Zealand once, and I went to Wellington, and it was yeah. amazing. And yeah. Wellington is where they have Weta, and I got to take mm -hmm. the tour that they have for tourists, and that was amazing. Even though it was like nice. a, like a touristy tour, I was like, this mm -hmm. is one of the coolest places I've ever been. So, <laughs> love that. <laughs> Um, also want to celebrate their 20th super chat on a live stream senator oh. with two bucks, two buck Chuck. <laughs> I'm going to drop a little like there on that super chat early. Thank you. With early stream, early tradition tip then love mm -hmm, y'all. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, senator. So appreciate thank it. But yeah. Um, just today, uh, Abby was like, I need your driver's license because she's setting up, uh, uh to be able to rent a car in New Zealand. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm yeah. in the process of, I was telling you this. 
this weekend, Augustine, I'm in uh-huh. the process of finishing downloading the Lord of the Rings soundtracks, putting them onto my iPod. <laughs> Where you I was waiting need, for it to be like, I'm in the process of getting need. my international driver's license. Nah. Fuck. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried nah. about that. The, the soundtracks, <laughs> when you put them on my iPod, when I put them on my uh-huh. iPod, I don't need internet. No Wi-Fi needed. It's off right. of the, the grid. It's off of yeah. the... Yeah. Completely. Hector, is that so, driving you all around New Zealand? <laughs> no, I'm driving us. And uh, I don't know if we're trading off, but it, uh-huh. I, I told her I'm, I'm willing to drive the whole thing. But we're gonna, mm-hmm. we are gonna commute like a six hour from from area to area. Oh, so yes. I was like, long. six hours. I was like, yeah. hang on a minute, let me finish getting these Lord of the Rings soundtracks. So make sure we have <laughs> let me enough the extended music. soundtracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, only yeah, that's yeah, only yeah, two yeah. movies, baby. That's only two oh, yeah, movies. Yeah. What are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do exactly. drive on the right exactly. side. Yeah. So you're gonna have to get used yeah. to that too, Hector. I'm and I yeah. I just make sure that you know you don't get accidentally get a car with a stick shift. Good luck. Dude. I'm sure. I yeah, will. I'm sure. I'm you sure might. the car rental you places. Might. No, but I'm sure the car rental places have dealt with enough American yeah. tourists and yeah, enough yeah, tourists in general to be like, probably. Can you drive stick shift? And I'll be like, No. no. They're like, okay, yeah. here's an automatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I've ever told. I don't think I've ever told this story on stream. I don't really talk about my South Africa trip very much on stream. Mm. But I went mm. to South Africa, drove on the other side of the road. But um, I I think I was ready for it. I don't know if I was yeah. ready for it, but I had some real yeah. panicky moments, man. Some <laughs> yeah, real dude. like, oh my God, yeah, we're going to die. Uh, yeah. Luckily, I know how to drive a stick shift. And so it was very natural to me to just like flop it over to the other side. But there was Good. this one moment, uh, I think it was the second time. Well, the first time I had to get on a freeway without like being directly just put onto a freeway, I actually had to take a freeway ramp. And normally in California or in the United States, you go under the ramp and then you go like you go under under the freeway or over the freeway and you exit or enter through your left or your right on the other side. On this side, and in South Africa, you enter through the front side. You don't have to go under the freeway. And I was so unready for that in my brain that I en- I entered how you should have, but I panicked because it felt so unnatural. I panicked. I stopped midway on the on-ramp i backed up and then i just pulled over panicking full-blown sweating because i didn't want to like jump onto the freeway and have cars coming at me uh full-blown sweating luckily there wasn't a lot of cars out there so we just waited to see how cars were entering and exiting this freeway (laughs) uh but dude it was panic inducing yeah it's all psychological it's all psychological yeah it was all psychological yeah yeah but um yeah it was uh it was cool driving through africa um yeah when we got so there was a part where we drove through that looked a lot like california actually rolling hills like very beautiful green grasslands and then we um we got to the part where they had those trees, like the trees, how they look in The Lion King, like the tall <laughs> trees with just like the flat, they almost look like clouds, yeah. just like the flat, like kind of long tops. And you yeah. best you best believe I threw on The Lion King soundtrack at that point. Boy, oh, I man. Was, it was nice. incredible, incredible. I, you just um, you just made me think, yeah. like, do I need any other soundtrack? No, I'm good. I'm going to have three Lord of the Rings, no, three you'll Hobbits. Be good. You'll That's be good. enough. Yeah. That's enough. You'll, There's nothing else in New Zealand. Funny. What other mm-hmm. the music do I need? What we do in the shadow <laughs> soundtrack? What else do I need? Nothing. That's it. The Frighteners. Just, just, just yeah. like get all of, just get all of Peter Jackson's movies. The Peter Sound Jackson case. mix soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, for sure. Two thousand five. King me, Kong. Yeah, that would give yeah. me absolute anxiety. I, I've never thought about that, but because I've driven in Europe, but they drive the same way like they do here in the United. Well, not mm-hmm. all of Europe, but ninety yeah, percent, ninety-eight right. percent of it right. drives on the left-hand side. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I would imagine even trying to get on a road or make a turn or whatever, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like the pedestrians are crossing on the opposite side of where you're normally yeah. used to or you yeah. know all that sort of stuff. Oh right. my god. Yeah, that would be it's terrifying. I inducing. feel like I'd be the yeah. slowest driver here oh, absolutely. pretty fast. Mm-hmm. In the UK mm-hmm. or anywhere else where they drive on the opposite side of the road, I would be yeah. in a panic. I'd be like, "Oh my god, what oh, yeah. which way? Which yeah. way am I supposed to go?" <laughs> That's I uh, worse. I'm the first time slow. I took a left-hand turn slow. in New Zealand, I thought I was going to yeah. die because yeah. I yeah. it felt like you were going into left uh, um oncoming, oncoming traffic. traffic. Yeah. Yeah, it mm-hmm. felt so weird, but everybody was yeah, everybody was chill. Everybody was cool. <laughs> Not a big That's deal awesome. apparently. I just, just use your awesome. just use your accent, you'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be yeah, okay. Right. I know. It, uh, I need to watch some yeah. 
Flight of the Concords and some uh, some Taika Waititi films. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who, um, yeah. And like Abby had to do an audition in a New Zealand accent, and she was like, "It's like right here. It's this." Yeah. It's this. Yeah, yeah. And she was saying like <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. When you get to six, it's sex. It's like, like it, That's it's like good. one, two, three, four, five, six million, six, seven, eight. I forget. It was so the eight was good. pretty bad. The eight was yeah, pretty it was bad. so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I need to. Yeah, I need to watch some. Uh, some bad batch there you go that's what there I you watch. go yeah that's absolutely. a perfect show to just, watch <laughs> yeah exactly just watch everything just watch flight of the concords mm -hmm. watch mm -hmm. the bad batch you just got to watch all that stuff yeah yeah somebody in the chat's asking didn't they film rings of power in new zealand i don't remember if they did for season I think one they i went, think they did I like season think... two they're like all england yeah, yeah i think season one they did go right. and they shot a bunch of plates and all that sort of stuff but i think season mm -hmm. two yeah for budgetary reasons i think they went to the united and kingdom which i just mm -hmm. i just ordered a an expanded soundtrack for the rings of power but it's not getting here until after i get back but it's oh, like the a season is it the mondo re release yeah season one mm -hmm. limited edition it's like, like they six did a, discs <laughs> 10 discs ten they discs. did a disc that's per crazy app. That's and they gave you cool. the, the original release, but basically B Bear McCreary's like, here's my complete music for each episode mm -hmm. on his Uncut. own disc. And as Just soon as I heard everything. that, I was like, I'm in, dude. That's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. Give it. That's wild, man. That. <laughs> it's too much. It's physical too much. media. Yeah. 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 Speaking of physical media, I got uh Thor Ragnarok and Thor the Dark Ooh. World on 3D DVD today. Ooh. Uh good. Where the hell did you it get Thor a... Ragnarok? Yeah. Where did I get it? It's yeah. a UK version. And oh, okay. uh yeah. so it's not they're not I'm not getting any like US releases basically. I'm getting all of these used off of eBay at this point. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Got them each for eight bucks. Such a steal. Damn. Such a steal. Damn. Yep. It, I, I remember when I when thing. I when I ordered Thor Ragnarok, uh -huh. I think it was like fifty bucks or something or more yeah. from the UK. Yeah. It was like well, damn. Because you're getting like high end first release of these movies like right when yes. they come out of course they're expensive but what are you getting now... a blu-ray box it's falling apart what does yours look like pull yeah. it up yeah, basically. see what it looks like the well, it's covered in boogers and caca i just ordered it's off just, ebay it's, it's some chorro it's used i'm buying i'm taking a risk and buying used versions and so <laughs> it was used fine. it was open the disc is fine honestly at um, this point i would be pretty yeah, okay yeah. just buying the 3d disc on its own and then mm -hmm. just like adding it to already a pre-existing case. Oh, I know, I yeah. know, I know. Yeah, I know. Well, you guys saw I what know. I'm doing. I'm going like super minimal with my cases. Right. Like I'm right. not even. Oh yeah. I'm not even using the Blu-ray. Look, this is the empty one that I've, that I just bought. Done. I just mm -hmm. swap it over to like an envelope with like a CD yeah. safe, disc mm -hmm. safe case, and right. now my co my collection of a thousand is just is like this big now. So it's yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's a great space yeah. saver. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's all right. It's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. It is you a great fool. space saver. It is. It is. Um, I don't know if I'm there yet. I don't know if I'm that. I'm there at that level yet. But oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's like, obviously, like it's your birthday tomorrow. What the fuck are we doing for your birthday? I should have had Whoa. a cake, guys. Uh, uh, tomorrow is existential crisis day. Oh come on. Uh, Why? Tomorrow. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm turning, turning forty. What are you? Nine. Who Look, cares? Listen, you're turning 39. twenty all over again. Come when on. You shit. guys turn forty. <laughs> I guarantee you it's going to happen the exact same way. I Augustine, I've been in that happens. crisis since I was 30. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it happens to me every um, day. It's, 40 is different. Every 40 is different, I, you guys. Ronan says he's going to send you mariachis at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually like a 6 a.m. kind of thing. No, but um, my, my trip yeah. to Spain was really my like birthday celebration. So that was, I think that was really... Yeah. Kind of the thing i think the last time i celebrated my birthday here in la with friends was like two years ago maybe i think you guys were there when we went to the bar went to that big yeah, old bar think, thing of course we were there so many people I think there was just fun. so many people there there's so be, many people there augustine just be 39 uh, and then next year when you're turning 40 be when you're turning 41, 39, 41. 41. 41. I'm 40. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> just, just skip the 40 altogether. What I'm saying is go from 39 to 41. Just yeah. be 39 yeah. again. That's not a bad and idea. Next year, that's not a bad you'll idea. be fine with it. You'll be like, I'm 41. 
It's not a big mm-hmm. deal. I have a few hours to mull it over, so we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. You know, I may wake up tomorrow. I may wake up tomorrow a 36 year old. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Nobody Who knows. knows. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You know what? I was thinking that would that did trip me up a bit. Uh-huh. I was like, I was scrolling through YouTube while I was uploading stuff for Invincible, and the reaction mm-hmm. not a. It was a theater reaction for Avengers Endgame popped up. Mm-hmm. Sure, oh. and I was like, "Dude, those mo- that movie's gonna be five years old this year." Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Force yeah, Awakens no, yeah. is coming. Uh, Twenty nineteen. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Because yeah. Infinity War f- was a five year anniversary last year. Yeah. You know. What? Yeah. <laughs> because we we Force we Awakens up- turns ten <laughs> next year. We, what? Yeah. We caught up what? to that five year time skip in uh, yeah. in Avengers Endgame. We caught yeah. up to the year twenty twenty three. Isn't like, that crazy? Huh? When that movie we're came there. out, we were like what? five year time gap. What? Yeah. yeah. We're we're, what we're, we're, we're living in it. We're, we're, we're literally it. there. Oh we're God. literally there. But I'm still convinced that we all went through a time warp during COVID. So I don't. Yeah, time seriously. doesn't really mean anything it's anymore. It's just it's all just weird at this point. All just weird. For sure. Yeah. <sighs> hey, how was WonderCon? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we can talk about it. Uh, it was fun. It was me I'm trying, and to, I'm trying to pull yeah. Augustine out of Walking depression. Around. I know, right? Oh, Get know. me it's out impossible. of here, guys. I'm in the nah. sunken place. I'm in the sunken place. <laughs> Get me out. Get me out. I'm crying oh, a man. single tear like through my smile. I want to pull up some, some tea right now and just be like, oh, yeah. man, I can't help you out, oh, man. You're in there. Sorry, bud. You're in there. You're stuck. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. First super chat on the live stream. Luis Maradiaga, 999, says, What's up, homies? First super chat. Just wanted to say I appreciate all the work y'all put in. Always fun and enjoyable content. Nice. Love from Chicago. Love from Chicago. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. Love Chicago. Have some pizza for I... us right now. Chicago's great. Yes, Seriously. Chi Town. I, f- I have family in Chicago. Love the place. Need to go visit cool. again. I didn't know you had family in Chicago. Yeah, I got a ton of family in Chicago. Oh, really? Cool. So many of them. We should, yeah, cool. we should go to what so, is it? C two C two E two. C two E two. There you I go. Think it we'll just see. happened, but let's go. Oh, really? Let's go. We'll go and next then, year. And we'll go yeah, next year. We'll go yeah. next year when yeah. Augustine's forty one. Let's go, <laughs> yep. and then we'll meet up <laughs> when I'm thirty seven years old. Thirty seven next year. Uh, Corey Ross with a nineteen ninety nine super chat. That's Thank twenty dollars. Says after the pandemic. I got my dream job as a theme park ride and show engineer slash designer. What oh, are wow. your guys' favorite rides? Thoughts on theme parks Ooh, in general? In an untapped IP oh, yeah. oh, that should have a ride or oh, attraction. Oh, my God. Corey. 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 I think, you, I think we just need to re, re, retitle this whole video right now. Wow. I, I actually <laughs> think we need to invite Corey onto the show and interview him because I love sum up. What, roller coasters. What, what, WonderCon was cool. Augustine uh, convinced me to buy a bunch of shit, so that yeah, was dope. I did. Just walking around did. buying toys. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later because I really okay, want okay, to okay. talk about hmm. roller coasters at this point. Yeah. Um, do First you guys question, have a favorite roller? Favorite First, rides. are you roller favorite coaster ride. people? Wait, oh. let me ask you guys this: Are you roller yeah. coaster people? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think we all kind of share this. Um, this, we're very fortunate that we've lived in southern, primarily southern California, our entire lives. So yeah. we've had amazing access to some amazing theme parks, Disneyland, Knott's Berry mm-hmm. Farm, Six Flags, Universal mm-hmm. Studios. I've been going to Disneyland off and on, you know, ever since I was maybe like six or seven. All through high school, I had a season pass to every theme park in Southern California, including SeaWorld. Um, so I love the experience. I love going. You know, my my relationship or how I feel about the companies differs all across the board. But the enjoyment that I get going to all the theme parks and being immersed into their various worlds and universes and mm-hmm. just the immersive feeling that I get from from all these places is is really spectacular. So I love going. It's one of my mm-hmm. favorite things mm-hmm. to do. And as as I get older and things start to crack and buckle a little bit more, it gets harder. But I still have a really fun time. <laughs> I saw Hector nodding his head in a deep no with roller coasters. Hector, what's yeah, going on, roller, buddy? Roller coasters, no. But I am a uh, like Adam, just a massive fan of. I, you know, I didn't know what the terminology was until I was an adult. Attractions, the attractions right. are what I like. It doesn't have to be a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, but even when I was a kid, I didn't really, I don't think I ever had a phase. And I feel like a, a lot of young people in Southern California have this where they go, no, nah, Six Flags is better than Disneyland. I'd rather go to Six Flags. Mm. I never had that. At mm. any age in my life, I was, I was like, <laughs> I'd rather go to Disneyland. I'll go to Six Flags uh-huh. with you and then be disappointed yeah. at how my DC superheroes are represented. But I'll go to Six Flags <laughs> with you. Like, 
can we talk about those costumes? They're janky. Can we talk oh, about they're like so bad? And, so and bad. Some of them are coming across my feed, and I'm sort of like James Gunn, save them. Like if you guys yeah. are like <laughs> this stuff out, yeah. mm-hmm. have some great looking costumes, and and you know the actors are trying their hardest, but they have like a like a Halloween store Green Lantern, you know, like they're yeah, like, hi, I'm John yeah. Stewart. And I'm like, you, like, you look terrible. They made the actor really... make his own costume. That's, that's how that's bad the, it is. That's <laughs> however you feel. And I know, Augustine, you are not a fan of Avengers Campus at Disneyland, no. California Adventure. Mm-hmm. But I, like I am, Same. I am such a fan of their embracing the MCU, like the mm-hmm. movies, that the fact that they're trying to bring the mm-hmm. movie characters mm-hmm. and the movie costumes into like that level of quality yeah. into, you know, and I think, I don't know if we were talking about this. I think we were talking about this at WonderCon, Augustine, like the, the challenges and differences between like Avengers Campus or Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland, because mm-hmm. Star Wars, it's, I would say, even more ambitious than Avengers Campus because it has that, we have a specific timeline that we're trying to fit in. Mm-hmm. And then what does yeah, that come right, with? What right. kind of challenges does that come with? Whereas the Marvel stuff, they, from the get, they were like, this is a separate universe than the movies because those movies move so quickly. They spent millions of dollars building a guardians of the galaxy ride. Those aren't even the guardians of the galaxy anymore in the movies. Right, like the roster right, right. changed. Exactly. You're right. So yeah. They had to be like, Ooh, we will remain separate. So I like that because it means if there is someone who is a fan of Steve Rogers, Captain America, they're present at the park. But if there's mm-hmm. someone who's a fan of Sam Wilson, Captain America, they're also present at the park. Like Shuri mm-hmm. and T'Challa are both Black Panthers, which, I, you know, like that kind of thing I love. But I also like how Galaxy's Edge forced, um, or Disney, I should say, forced Lucasfilm to be like, we need Boba Fett and the Mandalorian walking around. We don't give a shit <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. if it doesn't it's, fit in the post-Last hey, Jedi timeline. timeline. It's, you know, it. it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a bummer. I love that there yeah. is a timeline. I read a book that is about the Galaxy's Edge fictional character set in mm-hmm. that post Last Jedi. Like, I'm all into that stuff. I love how it's a very specific, you know, I think that in an ideal world, parents are showing their kids the Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. then they show them episode seven, episode eight, take them to Disneyland, just to blow their mind, be like, let's go ride Rise of the Resistance, where it's like, right, like we just watched this movie, and then they go home and watch The Rise of Skywalker to like end it. That's yeah. what Galaxy's mm. Edge is for. That's ideally. Mm. Let me tell you a quick story. Let me tell you a quick story. When <laughs> my girlfriend and I recently went to Orlando for a signing event, yeah, we spent a day at uh, Disney World Magic Kingdom, which I was like, that park sucks, dude. And we'll, we can talk about that <laughs> later. But I was like, Magic Kingdom, Orlando sucks, uh-huh. bro. I got stories about it. I got stories <laughs> like that involve either human or dog shit. Like first, first thing. First thing, you can't tell which walking one. Up, yeah, mm-hmm, can't tell. Mm-hmm. I, but the smell did not let me know. But I <laughs> was we we at one point the the rides are astronomically long wait times at Magic Kingdom, you know the Disney World park, and at one point Pirates of the Caribbean shut down, and then it came back up. So the wait time went to like 20, 30 minutes. So girlfriend and I rushed over. They're like, "All right, let's go ride this." We're looking it mm. up. It's it's basically essentially the same as the California's version of Pirates of the Caribbean, right? The Anaheim, mm-hmm. the normal Disneyland. But there was like, oh, there's maybe some difference, to it, whatever, like maybe little things in a different order, whatever. Mm-hmm. So when we're in line, and when we're in line, there was a couple behind me of adults. I think that they were parents to this little girl who was with them. Maybe mm-hmm. they were aunt and uncle, but I think they were like parents. And the parents were like trying to convince this kid this was going to be fun. And mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if this yeah. is like a first ever trip, like that the kid didn't have the context or background of what the hell this was. The fact that it was also like 7 p.m. at this point during the in the day is like 7 p.m. And they mm-hmm. were like, well, it's a good thing we just got here. Like they just like they started their day like after six or something or like after mm-hmm. dinner. So I had all these questions of like, what are these adults doing? What's happening? How are they expecting this to go down? Because the girl was like, not into this, like standing in line, obviously for a super long time. And they were like trying to convince the kid. And at one point, one of the parents goes, yeah, you know, you've seen the movies, right? And then the other parent, I think the dad asked that. And then the mom was like, I don't think she has seen those movies. And I I was like, oh, that's your job. (laughs) That's your job, parents. What in the hell are you doing taking your child to the most expensive place on earth, like an incredibly expensive vacation and not firing up disney plus the few weeks mm-hmm, beforehand mm-hmm. and being like 
hey, Pirates of the Caribbean is going to be fun. Let's watch this movie so mm -hmm. you know what the hell it is. So when a weird Johnny Depp in a beard pops up on this ride, you're not like, why is Johnny Depp? On? Like a kid <laughs> is going to be like, oh, that's Captain Jack Sparrow. That's this, that's mm -hmm. that, you know. So it broke my brain that these adults were just like, I think they've seen the movie. I'm like, you're in charge of that. How, how do you know what movies your kid has or hasn't seen? <laughs> I was just I think so... that doesn't compute to Hector because Hector, your Dude. brain only thinks of real life and movies. That's like <laughs> and then and then you you somehow coalesce. What the else two. is there? What else <laughs> exactly. is exactly but I mean exactly. like that, that may be true, Augustine, but I but uh -huh. I felt but like still, I was how do you not show your kids at least pirates of the that's Caribbean? Pretty, that's pretty bad. Well, that that's like... a topic that I want to get into after this roller coaster mm, talk okay. because uh, okay. of the experience at WonderCon, but also like some of the things mm. that we, that have been happening in fandom lately, but let's get back mm. to the question because we haven't even answered that yet. Uh, oh, really? Okay, so Hector's not a roller coaster guy. I'm a I roller, like coaster roller guy. Coasters. Yes, Adam, what's your favorite roller coaster or ride? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say my favorite, favorite, favorite. This should not be a surprise to anybody. Well, now I have two. I feel like Rise of the Resistance mm -hmm. being one of them, and then my yeah. favorite classic ride is the Haunted Mansion ride. Love. Oh, them. that's Interesting. great. Anything yeah. outside Disney that you can speak of? Um, I used to really be a big fan of the X ride at Six Flags. I haven't okay. ridden it in a long time. Long time. Yeah. Well, it also used to break down a lot too, but that mm -hmm. ride was really, really fun. Um, okay. Yeah. So I mean, I would say I have when some of the rides don't exist anymore. Like I love Back to the Future, mm -hmm. Universal Studios. That's not there mm -hmm. anymore. The Mummy mm -hmm. ride is fun. Transformers, I think, is the best ride at Universal Studios. In my opinion, yeah, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say those are like my tops. Okay, okay, nice. Hector, you're not a roller coaster guy. What are what right. is your favorite ride? Ride, ride, ride. I ride. mean, I I I'm not a roller coaster guy, but I do still love like the Incredicoaster is great. Yeah. But my favorite okay. so, attractions okay. are in the old school realm. I go Peter Pan at Disneyland. Okay, in I love Fantasyland. that ride, classic. Love classic. Peter Pan with all my heart. I love mm -hmm. Indiana Jones. I grew up mm -hmm, with Indiana mm -hmm. Jones being the new ride in the 90s. Classic, and I still yeah. think that ride pretty much holds up. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else? Um, I'm going to tell people a little hack about Indiana Jones that's kind of fun. Ooh, and I, I, think like I've told, I think I've told Augustine about okay. this. When you get on the ride, we used to do this in high school all the time because we're maniacs. We used to latch our belts, pull all the slack for the seatbelt, and tuck it underneath our butts. Mm -hmm. So it, when they would check our seatbelt, it would be obviously uh, buckled and everything. And then on the ride, <laughs> we'd have all the slack loose, so we could like stand up on the ride, and you know, it was it was insane. That's the death hack. That That's is the, the death, death hack. hack. Don't yeah. let your kids do it. But if you're an adult by you yourself, can, do it. You yeah. can reach up yeah. and grab that animatronic oh, Indiana totally. Jones foot. Like, come yeah. down, yeah. get in uh -huh. here. You, get I would here. almost get, get to a point. Where where I could touch that uh that oh, that, that bar that rock. God. That's wild. Oh my god. Just saying, if you <laughs> want to give it a wild. shot, go for it. <laughs> Hector, what favorite. about um uh Space Mountain? I know you and I have gone on Space Mountain before. You don't like Space Mountain? I don't Mountain? like it. No, I mean I I like it. I don't <laughs> I, love Space I don't Mountain like too. it. I don't <laughs> like it. it. I like it. I uh, don't love it. Let me tell you what. You know what? Maybe I'm weird for this. I like the Matterhorn more. Matterhorn is Oh yeah, super Matterhorn's fun. great. Oh. It's very janky. I loved the Matterhorn when you could spoon yeah. with somebody else. That's mm, when I loved yeah, it. Did they yeah, change yeah. it? They oh, changed yeah, it. It's yeah, all yeah. single seats now. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. This is oh, lame. Man. When you had to High have somebody in my lap, bros. Yeah. yeah. You just buckle okay. in. I love that. So much fun. <laughs> bu buckle right into your crotch, bro. I love you're, it. You're, I love you, bro. Your bro in high school who's not... <laughs> Was not comfortable with his heterosexuality keeps moving up because he doesn't want his butt touching your yeah. dick and you're yeah, like come exactly. on man <laughs> you gotta get away from the yeti it's safer here i got you, <laughs> I got you. lock <laughs> it in tight fool <laughs> bring it in tight homie are we homies or are then, we homies yeah <laughs> from, from other uh places i like um from like universal studios i do have a traumatic mm -hmm. love of the jurassic park ride uh, for that yeah. one drop, I, Tra I don't. I'm not so you super... don't like it, or you do like it? I, I did, but I was like traumatized by it when I was a kid. But I, but I <laughs> oh, have like I a see, soft I see. Spot it, it terrified yeah. you. Okay, yeah, your yeah, stomach yeah. slowly yeah, went yeah. into your mouth, and then you were yeah. like, "Oh, it's okay." Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all outside. I just like, no? I like, I like seeing videos on TikTok and stuff where people are like, "Oh, they shut down the ride and they turn on all the lights. Look, and it's just these like animatronic <laughs> dinosaurs. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, half dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be like, ah, and then they come back and they're just like right here. It's so funny. Before I answer my question too, I have not a traumatic ride for me, but I was on 
I went to Universal Studios right before they closed down Jurassic Park to make a Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. And so they weren't really paying attention to the ride very much. And so we were going up, middle of the day, we were going up and that climb is steep, like super, super steep and long. And so as we were yep. climbing up, we got stuck halfway up that climb. And so we were there like hanging out, maybe like a minute or two, everything was fine. Five minutes in, I'm like, mm, okay, I hope this is okay. 10 minutes in, I'm like, oh, okay. So we're just, we're hanging here for a while. <laughs> and, and then at around the 10 minute mark, this little girl in the front starts panicking, full blown oh, no. panic attack. Oh, she's no. like yeah. turning around. She's like, oh my God, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. She straight up thought we were all gonna die on this ride. I mean, for a kid, that is oh, the ultimate hell. God. She was not having it. And then the announcer had to keep coming on to the, to the loudspeaker and say, please sit down. You should not be getting up. She was like, oh, my God. Trying to get up and out, like they were not, they were not going to let us exit at that point. They wanted it to right. go through. I don't know what the holdup was. They didn't explain what the holdup was, and then yeah. eventually, after like fifteen minutes, we start climbing. And at this point, that little girl was even starting to get to me. I'm like, I hope we don't slide backwards. Like, I hope everything's okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. Everything's, yeah. everything's good. Yeah. I hope the safety measures are in place. Uh, and then we went down, but. I think that little girl had a Hector experience on that ride yeah. for sure, because she was mm -hmm. not not having not having it at all. Uh, for me, I am a ride guy, except mm -hmm. for motion simulated rides. So I can't do yes. Star Tours. I can't do Star Tours. I can barely do yeah. the Falcon Millennium Falcon Run. At, yeah, I, can, yeah, yeah. I cannot do the Simpsons ride at. Um, yeah, at dude. Universal Studios because Universal. those are puke fests I, for me. Oh, I love I, the I, idea. I can still of those do those rides. surprisingly. I, I can too, but yeah. I also don't love them, but I do, I can do them. And I, and I really, really right. like, like star tours a lot. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah. the first time I went on the Simpsons, my girlfriend and I stepped on and someone had just puked. And so they put yep. a bunch of sawdust mm -hmm. down and I was mm -hmm. like, this is the grossest, worst day. It's disgusting. I hate it. Those I hate little it, man. things smell like puke. It's but, just, it's, yeah. it's all the way bad. It's bad. Be, speaking of universal studios, that would be part, that would be part of my answer to the question. Cause this was my answer for years. If this topic ever came up, what like untapped IP mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. think could even slightly compete with a Disney brand in terms of like having a park or having rides and stuff? I would, I was saying for years, Nintendo is not just in mm -hmm. theme park rides, yeah. but like in movies is the last major untapped mm -hmm. the nintendo mm -hmm. power could rival the marvel cinematic universe if they 100%. did a bunch of yeah. movies based off of nintendo but not the illumination animated mario movies and that movie was to me it was proof that audiences are down for it even if, because that movie's quality to me did not equal this should make a billion dollars like i've mm -hmm. seen great yeah. animated movies that i'm like damn this made a billion dollars this is deserving mm -hmm. of makeup like that was not mm -hmm. the Mario movie. I thought it was cute. I'm I'm not a hater. I didn't think it was like bad. I was like, it's fine. But yeah, if they had made a Mario movie live action to the quality of like how a superhero movie is made with special effects that in colors that pop like a, a like a speed racer movie or something, and it mm -hmm. was funny and action packed, two billion dollars. Like, and uh, if a bunch of <laughs> Nintendo movies are made, so I've had that yeah. conversation before. So I'm like, I think Nintendo could have its own park, but now that they partnered mm -hmm. with Universal. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, good luck. Good yep. luck. Like Universal Studios yep. has its ups and downs. I think it's pluses and it's minuses. You know, it's um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it it uh yeah, it it's just a weird time. And they announced like a Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball theme park that's mm -hmm. gonna be opening up in the next couple of years, but it's in like Saudi Arabia. And that's the other yeah. thing of like that's super cool. And I think they even have like a Warner Brothers world or a Universal Studios like I think like, it's in New um, Zealand or Australia or Sydney or something, right? Somewhere, mm -hmm. but they have a they have a theme park that's going to be like something universe, and I think it's based off of Universal IP. I'm trying to or DreamWorks mm -hmm. or something, but it's yeah. also like in in the Middle East somewhere because those places are they're just rolling in money and they're investing and investing. So it's this really interesting thing of like, damn, dude, I want to go to Dragon Ball Park. I don't know if I want to fly to Saudi Arabia to go to Dragon Ball. Like, I may never I'm do not, that. I'm not going to. Right? Going it's to. it's it's crazy, no. but. The other answer I would have too for this is to do a really streamlined DC universe, but you have to do it on film first. You have to have the James Gunn plan work out. And then once that happens, I honestly think that DC characters could sustain their own park or a land or, you know, for them to just completely redo the Warner Brothers uh, mm -hmm. uh, Six Flags deal, whatever, whatever that is, and like trick all that stuff out, I think would be dope. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't know. What about you guys? What other untapped intellectual properties could be rides? I got a lot. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, understand. I think the biggest one for me is DC for sure. DC yeah. is mm-hmm. like, the, yeah. like just what we were saying, like you were saying in the beginning, you know, Six Flags has not, and I don't even know how the licensing or whatever works. And I don't know what Six yeah. Flags can and can't do if it all needs to be approved by Warner Brothers, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they absolutely need to do something. But I mm-hmm. think part of the reason why nothing is happening is I just don't feel like, you know, uh, I don't feel like Six Flags any of the locations has the attendance anymore correct it just correct. doesn't seem like people are really going there and i cannot imagine that warner brothers is in any shape or form interested in building a theme park so i don't know <laughs> i don't know what you do with those characters i don't know what you do with that ip i don't know if you try to license it to another park but then mm-hmm. you look at disney and you look at universal and you look at some of the other parks universal and disney don't i mean i know that disney just made some kind of a deal or something to expand but they're mm-hmm. running, they're literally running out of space. Like at, mm-hmm. at the, yeah. in 10 years, Universal is going to have to build themselves like into Burbank to fit yeah. the park. Mm-hmm. So I don't yeah. know how that's going to yeah. work with all that stuff. But yeah, I yeah. think that's a big one. I mean, yeah. So the, I'll just go DC is I think one of the big ones for me. Yeah. I th- There's a lot to me. Uh, I know they kind of have one in Japan already, but a Studio Ghibli theme park. Oh, like full yeah. blown Disney style Studio Ghibli theme park would yeah. be beautiful, fully immersive. It would knock Disney beautiful. out of the water. I think mm-hmm. the Dragon Ball Z, but also placed in Japan. Like I don't want to fly to Saudi mm-hmm. Arabia. I would mm-hmm. fly to mm-hmm. Japan to go to a Dragon Ball Z theme Me park. Me too. Me too. Uh, Me too. I would go to. I would drop everything and leave everything to go to new zealand for a lord of the rings themed park yeah all yeah. done Dude. super high quality just yeah. like that not yeah. a single not a single drop of water would should be out of place at that pl- at that yeah. place if it was like <laughs> lord of the rings central it's got to have the mines of moria it's wow. got yeah. rivendale it's got to have everything rivendale. what would it's you call it everything oh just middle earth just call it yeah. middle earth yeah uh, or like exactly. it's, it's got to be because you have so much room to play with other things that are not just Lord of the Rings yeah, related. Yeah, right. Or I'd call it like yeah. like the world of Middle Earth or something yeah, that has Middle Earth, Middle Earth in the title. Yeah, yeah for I sure, think Middle Earth just like, works because it's mm-hmm. the place where everything really happens. Yes. even mm-hmm. like from first yeah. age to third age stuff. Yes, um, could, yeah. I also think oh, I so also sweet. think that um, what else? I think you walk you in and just dude that's Dude, yeah, you're, you're, you're immediately running with elves oh my God. <laughs> through the woods <laughs> oh it'd be so cool yeah it would be incredible um I, you said nintendo hector but i do think pokemon yeah. themselves could run an entire park agreed and ju- you yeah. could just have a, an entire pokemon centric park agreed um thrill I rides think, cute rides you're right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything everything it could have everything ages. for everybody yeah. It so can really, yeah. you guys can are really geniuses, just, man. <laughs> it, I mean, they, they they just need to put us in 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 charge of the world oh, at this charge. point. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll do everything right. We'll do everything right. <laughs> Nobody will argue, and everybody will be happy. You know what would you know be actually works. amazing if James Cameron mm-hmm. and Peter Jackson teamed up, and they Ugh. did a theme park, and like mm-hmm. one one massive, it kind of it would kind of be like Disney World, where there's like multiple theme parks, but one is. Middle Earth, one is Pandora, mm-hmm. one can yeah. be like some yeah. other James Cameron thing that's like, I don't know, Terminator or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, yeah. that'd be amazing. Skynet. Yeah. You go yeah. To Skynet. Yeah. I think that'd be, that'd be a great <laughs> yeah. idea. Um, but yeah, I think abyss. those, uh, any of those ideas I think would hit. Yeah. I think they would be massive, massive hits. But once again, to go back to your point, Adam, about theme park attendance being down, I do think it has to do with the quality and the care that people are putting into the creation of their parks. Oh, totally. Because if you don't give it the Agreed. space, Six if Flags you don't so give it the attention, date. dude, I went to Six Flags, and this was like ten years ago, maybe even longer yeah. than that. Like, yeah. I saw the roller coasters and the chip, the the paint was chipping off of the rides. It was like trash yep. on the floor. Like yep. the plants were drying up. They weren't watering their plants. Yeah, like, it was just it just it felt sad, I, I, and I. As much as I love roller coasters, I won't go back because I don't feel like if they're not taking care of their plants, what's up with that yeah. bolt that's like a thousand feet in the air that yeah. nobody's touched since 1973, right? Seriously. Like, I ain't going to go on that. That's crazy. Col- Colossus crazy hasn't had Colossus hasn't had a piece of like equipment re- replaced since like 98. I don't know. <sighs> it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. So I just, it makes me feel like I can't trust the rides, which is yeah. why I enjoy Disneyland so much because... It, it's hard to find something that's out of place and it really oh, yeah. kind of helps in the immersion it's and that's mm-hmm. really all i want i just want to when i go and pay mm-hmm. for a theme park 
I want to feel like I'm mm-hmm. immersed. It doesn't have to totally. be Disney stuff. It could be whatever's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and just be transported to that place. Because I think that's the magic of, of theme parks mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and I mean, I Six Flags, you would go for years and years and years, and they would have, like, the mm-hmm. 89 Batmobile, but the Batman and Robin mm-hmm. stunt show. And I think yeah. now they might have, yeah. I think yeah. now they might, they might have the Tumblr now, but it's like the 1989 mm-hmm. Gotham City. And I'm like, this is so, this hodgepodge of, yeah. you know, like even the Superman ride is very 90s. And I'm like, come yeah. on, yeah. we got it. It's pretty rough. Do something. It's pretty Jesus. rough. Yeah. yeah. And it makes me not want to just, it just makes me not, not want to go. Yeah. Anyways, I could talk about theme parks and, and roller coasters yeah. all day long. Actor. Where, we, where, we got we which had, where is the Pandora emotions. ride, by the way? Is that it? Is that in Magic Kingdom? Disney World, yeah. No, Disney uh, World. no that's at uh, Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. Yeah. 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 That Amazing was the one, ride, by the way. I love it. I know. It's, that's yeah. the one we didn't do. We did We did a half day at Epcot, which mm-hmm. everybody said, as soon as we said, we went to Epcot, everyone in Florida was like, oh, that's kind of crappy. And we're like, we got we did a half day. We just spent the evening. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, well, mm-hmm. then that makes sense. That's fine. And we were yeah. like, yeah. we did a Guardians of the Galaxy ride there that's called Cosmic Rewind. Super mm-hmm. fun. Love yeah. that ride, and then we did the the main sort of Magic Kingdom, and boof, it disappointed. It was fine, <laughs> but from now, like from now on, for the rest of my life, uh-huh. the second some Floridian is trying to talk shit about Anaheim's Disneyland, be like, you know, ours is better. We have a bigger castle. I'm gonna be like, you had a pile of shit, human or dog. <laughs> As I walked up to the trolley to the to the monorail to get to the park, you can't say anything about how Florida. It was sweatier. It was swampier. Uh-huh, it was gross. Uh-huh. Y'all are down. Yeah. Your park is Disney's bigger, pretty immaculate, with a bigger castle. But it was like less rides, and everything took uh-huh. forever, and it kind of sucked. So Disneyland will mm. be the superior. You guys want to hear my ranking? No, I'll save it for next time. I'll save it for next time. <laughs> I but, heard the ranking. The ranking is very yeah, controversial. Did. Yeah, Magic Kingdom, Very controversial. Bottom, bottom of the list. Number one, <laughs> yeah. Disneyland. Number two, California Adventure. To find out my three, four, yeah. and five, tune in when I get back <laughs> Later from on the New podcast. Zealand. Later on the podcast. I've never been to the Florida theme parks, but I would like to go at some point. Uh, I think, it, I, I think I you wanna should go, go Adam, because you're a fan. Yeah. I think you should yeah. go. You'd get a hey, lot out of it. How about if the three of us go with this next Super Chat? This is their fifth Super on a live stream. Chad Mason, $10 Super Chat, says, You did WonderCon. But when are you going to do MegaCon Orlando? And oh, I'll there say, you go. Soon, as soon as they fly us out. And then when they do, <laughs> three of yeah, us, yeah, yeah. we'll take a couple of days. We'll do Animal Kingdom. We'll do the Avatar mm-hmm. ride. We'll go to mm-hmm. Pandora. Yep. We'll freak out. And uh, I think we'll that's a good idea. Ride I think uh, we, we should get in contact with some people. If any of y'all know some people, what time Megacon, of year is that know. MegaCon at? If it's in oh, the middle right. of summer, I will <laughs> oh, not be going. <laughs> It swamp. might be. Yeah, better be. Summer. Better be. I don't December. want to be swimming in my pants. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> if it's, it's not in enough. January, I'm in. There's not enough ball deodorant <laughs> in the world to get you prepared for that. Trust. Guys, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Be sure to pick up their ball deodorant. <laughs> David Taylor's got a five dollars super oh chat. Happy God. first day of April. Happy birthday, Augustine. Safe travels to Hector. Excited to rewatch some of the Spider-Man films in the theater starting this month. Yeah, that's going to be mm. cool. Oh, yeah. I, that's right. Adam, I forgot about that. I would that? do that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm taking my girlfriend because she's never... Uh, I don't think she's ever seen any of them in, at all. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Oh, I figured, wh- why not, why not go to the theater? <laughs> yeah. that's that. Honestly, that's one of my favorite things about them doing so many re-releases is i i want to see them because i haven't seen them in a theater since they came out in 2002 2004 2007 and Mm. i can bring someone who's never seen them so it's a really fun thing to share so i'm looking forward to to going and seeing them can you you do me a favor can you do me a favor can you go see the raimi movies in the theaters but then amazing spider-mans can you watch them in 3d at home please because they're in the theater they're not gonna be in 3d they're gonna be in 3d and then homecoming Uh. and far from home I got them in 3D. I'll let you borrow them. Uh, I don't have mm-hmm, No Way mm-hmm. Home, but I think you have a file of that. So can you do. just watch those at <laughs> yeah. home, please? Please. <laughs> but go enjoy the Sam Raimi movies. Go do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. It'll be fun. Uh, speaking of, uh, read Taylor's uh, uh, super chat there as well, Hector. Taylor with New Zealand $10. 10 New Zealand dollars. 10 New Zealanders. <laughs> 10 New Zealanders. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Ara Moana says, hey, guys, sending this from 22 hours in the future here in Aotearoa, which is New Zealand. Hope you have safe travels here, Hector. 
Aotearoa. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that's fun to say. I feel like hey, Elf, Buddy the Elf. Is it Aotearoa? Oh, that's fun to say. Aotearoa? 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 I want to know. I want to know. I'm if, invested. Yeah, if anybody knows, pronounce that yeah. in the chat, because uh, if, if Taylor's even still here, because uh, this was uh, like 10 minutes ago. Future, that's true. Um, also, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to know if that was, is that like North Island, South Island? Like where yeah. exactly on the magical plane of existence do you live? Because mm -hmm. New Zealand <laughs> is the greatest place on earth. You're Mordor. <laughs> I know. We need Hobbiton. to go. Where are you? Yeah. We, yeah. we definitely need to go at yeah. some point if we can. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Tyler saying Amazing Spider-Man in 3D is so good. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. August okay. just got them in 3D too. We literally have two, yeah. four, six copies of those movies between yeah, us. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we yeah. each need to yeah. have one because what if I need to watch it at 3 a.m. and y'all are asleep? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, who's going to help me? Call, Nobody. Just call me. Just knock on my door. <laughs> just knock on my door. I'll wake up. <laughs> He's, he shows up. You need what? <laughs> you know? All you right. Know, <laughs> Yeah, I if it were either of you guys for real at three in the morning. If it was one of you guys knocking on my door, I would be pissed. I'd answer the door. I'd be like, what are you doing? It's you. And then I'd be less pissed. And then you'd say, hey, man, can I get that copy of uh, Monsters, Inc. in 3D? I need it. And I'd be like, right now. Yeah, for okay. a project. And I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad it's for a project. <laughs> for a project. <laughs> oh, my God. Project I'm doing. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Um, Hector, so let's talk about our time at WonderCon. Um, and cool. I really, are you willing to show off your cool figure that you got? And, and, the, and the ride it was to get to that point? Tell them, tell them the story. Dude. Well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, this all stemmed from me seeing action figures over the past couple however many mm -hmm. months and years, I'm going with Abby to various conventions. And at every one of these conventions, there's usually a good selection of like action figures, toy sellers, you know, and some of those cooler, higher end stuff. And so I've seen some pretty awesome Wolverine toys specifically. So for these past mm -hmm. couple of months, yeah. I've been like, yeah. man, I know Augustine loves Wolverine so much. If mm -hmm. I happen to find one of these, maybe I could show it to him. So we're walking around mm -hmm. WonderCon and I was like, I'm gonna try to find you know, and we found a couple. We found like the X Force costume Wolverine, yeah, yeah. and like, mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is that they're like cloth costumes, mm -hmm. right? Those Very that's what kind of action with the cloth is. costumes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so go ahead and tell them the story. Then what happened, August? So Hector and I were shopping around. Right, first we were looking for X Men ninety seven figures, specifically Wolverine, because Hector's collecting those. No possible. Apparently, find. they sold out Impossible. immediately immediately and so you can buy them for probably about 50 bucks online at this point i think actually that's the price they were going for at the con as well that's way overpriced anyways yep. if we would have found it for 50 bucks we would have bought it so we go up <laughs> to this booth looking for more wolverines hector's showing me the other what what brand are they hector the the other wolverines Mezco. that you were showing me mezco was it mezco. mezco mezco brand these are these like and then they're like <laughs> one in 12 like 112 scale meaning mm -hmm. whatever yeah. is real scale it's like 12 times smaller but that's their scale so it's a little bit bigger than like a six inch action figure but smaller than like a yeah hot toys which are like big doll right. sized things right and so hector as he's showing me these figures he sees this conan that he's been looking for for a long time long long time and he starts he starts showing me everything about it he's like oh my god they've been looking for this for a while blah 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 the guy hands it over to us he's like i don't really have this is the one i have left he's like you either take it or you don't i don't even know the price on it and so the homeboy has to call his dude he's like all right how much do you want to sell this for while the guy is looking and trying to get a price for it hector's looking online three hundred dollars four hundred dollars like somewhere around there and then the guy shoots the price to hector and hector's like because it's incredibly low. It's so low that I'm like, Hector, you have to fucking buy this thing. Like, you cannot let this go. It's it's in your grasp right now. And Hector's like, two hundred and twenty dollars. No, I'll, I'll get it later. Two hundred twenty dollars. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll get it later. I'm like, Hector, no. And the reason in why Hector's I words, said foolish, foolish. Yeah, the reason that why foolish. I was panicking was because I've done that so much with stuff that I've wanted. Where I'm just like, eh, I'll get it later. I'll get it later. Even if it's something that I'll definitely want, I'm like, eh, it'll be here when I get back. It's never there when I get back. It's never there. I always regret it and I end up thinking about it for the rest of my life. And so Hector and I were hungry. I was like, okay, let's let's just go grab some lunch. We'll mull it over, like over some nachos, and then we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. 
And so we're talking and in my mind, I was like, Hector, if he does not buy this thing, I'm literally going to go buy it and hold it for him until his birthday. If he does not <laughs> buy this thing, uh, luckily at so the table, I was able to run him through my thought process of every, every yeah. step that it would take for him to find this figure again at this price with no shipping, no tax, no nothing again. And so yeah. you had to buy it. There was no other choice. I, and so we finished. I eating. looked it up. Yeah, yeah. Looked it up and it was like, $280, $300 plus $90 to ship it. You know, mm -hmm. this is off of like yeah, eBay geez. sellers. The thing that makes this thing rare is that this company will make a toy and then it they'll stop. It's sort of like out of mm -hmm. print. Like they, they, they have stopped production on this figure and they may even lose the license or whatever to the character mm -hmm. or whatever. But yeah. I one time at San Diego Comic-Con either last year or the year before asked um, somebody at the Mezco booth like they had a booth there, the actual toy company, because they were showing off a new, their new stuff, like a new Wolverine toy mm -hmm. and this and this and this. And I asked a representative there, I'm like, hey, you have this Conan on display. Like, can I get this? Is this for sale? And he was like, no, we just, we have it on display. It's one of our, in our, in our, in our previous catalog, but like, we don't have it anymore. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, how would you go about getting one of these? And he goes, honestly, he goes, your best bet would be to join a Facebook group that is like Mezco Collectors that they will go through phases of like selling off their toys to kind of get new mm -hmm, ones and sort of trade mm -hmm. and let each other know. He's like, that would be your best bet. Cause like even yeah. looking online, I, the, it was incredibly expensive at that point cause it was just out and yeah. gone. So yeah, we're yeah. at the table and I was like still on eBay, like, dang dude, 220 bucks is a really good, a really good deal. And Augustine was like, yeah, no shipping. And I was like, damn it, dude, I know. Cause I told the guy at the, <laughs> yeah. at the booth, I told him, I said, hold yeah. on to it. I said, let me think about it for a day. I'll come back tomorrow. Cause I was coming back on Sunday. Mm -mm. And as I'm walking away, the guy's like, I can't promise that it, it'll be here tomorrow. And I was like, no, I yeah. know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know. We went to go eat and like 30 minutes yeah. later, I came back. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> the guy, luckily he did, he did part it. He did have it aside for you because he didn't put it back on the shelf. And there it is. He didn't put it back on the shelf. When he came back, the dude was like, he's back. And then he pulled it out from like yeah. under the table because he had it, he had it saved for Hector. But yeah, Whoa. dude, good, good purchase. Good, good purchase. Whoa. Are you happy? Look at all, you <laughs> happy look at all this crap it comes with. Look at all this yeah. crap. Look at all the hands <laughs> to touch yourself. <laughs> the hands. Have you opened you it yet, keep, Hector? You can kill a man five ways before they hit the ground. Um, I haven't yet. I should. Okay. Okay. He, well, what he looks like in here. <laughs> there he is in there. There he is. You can see. So are you are you yeah. actually in going there. to open it, or are you going to leave oh, it? Oh, absolutely. In the... Okay. Yeah, Hector I'm opens his toys. Psychopath. Yeah. There's a, so many. I got so many. Like, so so many people. Whenever I, I get like a well, so I bought the Arrow collection mm -hmm. of the two Conan movies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I have yeah, them yeah, in yeah. the I have them in the case. And 4K. people are, are you gonna are you gonna open that or are you gonna leave it? Because you know they, mm -hmm. those things go out of print and they're hard to get and yada yada yada. And open I was like, it. Yeah. no, I'm gonna watch the movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. I'm not gonna leave it of in course. the shrink wrap forever. What do you think this is? Yeah. Silly. <laughs> I enjoy my toys. The no. only toys yeah. that I have like really f saved in their package are my Daft Punk toys that it's mm -hmm. like a super limited run that yeah, they made. Yeah, those are cool. And those are cool. Yeah, and I don't know. You've I don't, got I don't one know if of like 15. Anything. Yeah, I don't know if they, I don't know how many they made. I don't know if they if they, you know, like whatever. I just bought it and I'm super happy with it. And I just love the band so much that I'm just like, you know what? I don't need to play with these. Like these mm. actually look cooler inside of their package. Mm -hmm. Whereas like my Ninja Turtles, sure. where are my Ninja Turtles? Those the look Neko so ones. dope that you can't have them inside the package. It, you, know, you're doing a dis you pose injustice. Them. Yeah, you have yeah. to have them posed on your shelf for them to look yeah. rad. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, was uh, was uh, La La Land Records there this home. year? I don't think so. No, oh, they okay. weren't. I was looking out for them. I was, I was looking mm -hmm. out for them. Mm -hmm. I was looking out for... You know those booths that have like we're selling trade paperbacks half off or twenty percent mm -hmm. off or whatever kind of yeah, kind of poke yeah. around in there. Augustine was on the hunt. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, for some Ninja Turtles comics. That's and right. That's I right. I feel really bad because we went to the IDW booth, and this mm -hmm. guy was like, Augustine was very nice. He goes, "I'm I'm looking to want to get to read some Ninja Turtles comics. Where should I start?" And the guy was like, "Yeah, okay, I'm going to give you three answers." <laughs> and I was already like, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. this guy." The dude like, okay, hyperventilated because so I don't know if anybody's ever asked gonna, him that question before. I'm so excited, and I was like, <laughs> "Now, God bless him. He was a lovely man." Yeah. But he yeah. kept saying, "You know, 
He goes, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. He goes, yeah. you could read the last Ronin, which everybody loves. And Hector and was standing awesome. behind me. I didn't know, but Hector's behind me going. As we walked mm-hmm. away, as we were walking away, I was like, let me be the one person that disagrees with <laughs> everyone on earth. I did not like that comic book. I would not recommend that. You know, um, and I was like, oh, no, I know you don't like that. I was like, oh, OK, great, 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 great. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But then the next day I sent him, uh, Augustine, uh-huh. I sent you a, a, a link for like, here's like where the oh, beginning yeah. of that series starts with the hardcover Absolutely. or paperback. And because yeah. it was like tough to find that 2011 Ninja Turtles IDW series from the beginning, like a volume mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. None of the comic book sellers had those paperbacks. None of them had the hardcovers. Right, right. And Augustine was like, I think I might want to start trying to get like the hardcovers of that series. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. here you go. Here's a link. But yeah, yeah. it's, um, you sent yeah. me on a rabbit hole and now there's 15 there volumes that are in my Amazon wish list. So thank you. Good. It's a lot. It's a lot of, it is, but you know what's books. really cool. You just said that out yeah. loud in front of the community. So I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if you got a little delivery of a volume one, <laughs> get you going. <laughs> or if, uh, if anybody, no, no. If, no. In, in all honesty, sometimes this has happened too. In fact, Adam, I think I've got some Blu-rays for you delivered by the community. Got them from the PO box. Oh, so I nice. To you. Okay. Um, but our community is so nice that like we were talking about how I maybe needed to join this action figure Facebook group, but I never did that. But like, there's been times where we talked about something and then people will hit us up and they're like, Hey man, I have that comic or I have that thing. Mm -hmm. Can I send it to you? Cause I'm trying to get rid of it or I don't want it anymore or whatever. Um, so maybe there's somebody right now watching. that's like, Oh, I have those Ninja Turtles comics, but I have them in paperback and I don't need the hardcovers anymore Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could score. Wonderful. Look, them off also, somebody. also, there's something yeah. magical happening in the chat, you guys. There's two what? New Zealanders talking to each other. Sit! <laughs> awesome. And I cannot take my eyes off of it because uh, I oh. am in so in did, awe. <laughs> did we get oh, a pronunciation? Amazing. Yeah, we did. We did. Tyler did pronunciate Ooh. it for us. Uh, do you see it, I Adam? I think it's yeah, up there somewhere. Out te Aurora. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Out te Aurora. Roa. Yeah. Out te Aurora. Aotearoa. Aotearoa. <laughs> Taylor's watching going, OP. oh, God. <laughs> oh, these, these dudes. <laughs> yeah. Aotearoa. Uh, Abby also it's asked if I have any Lord of the Rings collectibles. That's funny you should say I don't have any. I just have the movies, but I told Hector that I might Aotearoa. walk out of WonderCon with a sword because mm. I, I, think I, I think I need to start collecting those authentic Lord of the Rings swords. Yeah. Those are sweet. But no, not Aotearoa. yet. Aotearoa. Aotearoa. Yeah. I'm going to walk um, around New Zealand saying that. People are going to be like, what are you trying to say? I'm like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and also, cool. we should say that we that we hung out with Ronan in the chat, and we also hung out yeah, with Wesley absolutely. at nice. WonderCon, Still. and that was great. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Wesley bought mm-hmm. me a drink. Thank you, Wesley. Yay. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> nice. we, I I'd met Wesley before, but not like in the official capacity of like we're homies, but now we're homies yeah. and he bought me a Moscow meal. So thank you, Wesley. That was very nice Aww. of you. Oh, that's and, true. Yeah, because I think yeah. when we were doing stuff at Hyper, Hyper was Wes working? Yeah. Was Wes still there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, working I think so. There? Wes was there so. while we were at Hyper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But he was always busy with Zach stuff, so I never really yeah. interac- sure. interacted with him yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then yeah. what else did we He's do, He's always Hector? busy at West. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Unicombs in the chat with uh, two ninety nine Australian dollars <laughs> saying, I'm sorry I'm late. Cavill stinky Spielberg goat. <laughs> Great. Great. Fantastic. Thanks, Ryan. Fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think actually, we should, we should – we should also ask either our Aussies only Ryan or our New Zealand fans if they had a, a, a if they have or have been wanting a roller coaster or theme park in their country. Mm. What should it be, and what do, what yeah. what do you want? What do you want to see? I think <laughs> I need to see them answer that in the chat somewhere, please. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> corrected me sorry it's not australian dollars it's dollary dues that's what it that's what it is thank you <laughs> 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 <Dollary dues. laughs> oh, oh my god that's absolutely funny. yeah we did stand um, at the hilton for 20 minutes trying to so, find seats the hilton yeah we did bar. we were at wondercon oh for the bar it yeah was a hack. yeah so one yeah, more thing that's... that i wanted to to talk mm-hmm. to you guys about and this goes to WonderCon and Adam you can talk to this too because it's not just WonderCon because mm-hmm. I'm sure you've experienced it too is while we were at WonderCon I was looking for uh Invincible or sorry Marvel team ups uh issue number what was it 114 oh, Hector God. or something like that uh the, no, the I issue mean, Marvel team Invincible. up yeah 
Invincible meets look- um, Spider-Man, right? Mm, yep. And so I was looking for that, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe if I get lucky, I'll find it. Um, Ronan mm-hmm. and Hector shoot me a message. They're like, we found it. It's $125. Mm-hmm. What yeah. the farts, dude? Yeah. What is going on with this like nostalgia farming and price gouging with all of this mm-hmm. stuff? I just, yeah, I, I don't know. How do you guys feel about like all of this stuff? Not to say that things aren't expensive enough as they are just in right. life. Groceries are about a billion dollars every time you go yeah. to groceries. Gasoline every time I buy is, toilet paper, I'm like, I'm going to start just yeah. using old clothes. What is this like, pricing? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm still the dang, dang full time, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> Good Lord. But like, have you guys noticed this? Has this affected you? Hector, you go to the most conventions out of all of us. Like, I've seen it. Has, yeah. Have you noticed this everywhere? Is this something that just because, yes. like, because we're getting older now and it, are people just farming off yes. our nostalgia? Like, what do you guys think yeah. of this? That too. I mean, it's all of the above. It's like it, just the fact that, uh, invincible is a popular show right now i'm sure Mm -hmm. that's why that specific issue why the whole series is going up in price i know that Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago i probably could have found i mean maybe 10 years ago i probably could have found an a copy of invincible issue number one from Mm -hmm. the year 2003 that's a 20 year old comic book it's not the oldest but Mm -hmm. it's not new maybe could have found one for like a couple of hundred dollars Mm -hmm. right and each of the issues sort of after that, getting little by little an incremental Lower. price, you know, $20, mm-hmm. $30 until you start getting to issues where they're like, it's three bucks, five bucks, like basically mm-hmm. the same price they were when they mm-hmm. came out. And I saw a, a copy of Invincible issue number one at WonderCon for sale at one of the comic book sellers where like they also do the vintage, the old school, you know, very expensive uh, issues, $1,000. Jesus and- Lord. And it's crazy because like I, (laughs) no part of the original creative team sees that money because this is all aftermarket stuff, Mm -hmm, but it is also mm -hmm. like, it still could be good for them in the long run because that writer artist, Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker, or later Ryan Otley, um, could be more in demand for the stuff they're doing now. So it's this weird Mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm, where I'm like, damn mm -hmm. dude, a thousand dollars. And I don't know, you know, Corey Walker, I don't know how much you got paid to do that initial couple of first couple of issues of Invincible. And yeah. now look what it's turning into. And now, yeah. And it's a whole, it's so many different conversations all wrapped into one. It's capitalism. It's the fact that uh, we are getting older and people are retreating into their nostalgia, especially mm-hmm. exacerbated by the pandemic. It's, yeah. um, it's just so many different things. And um, a part of me likes to see comic books and, um, like geek culture be celebrated and be like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. You know, Mm -hmm, when we were mm -hmm. kids, I think when we were kids was the first time that like action comics, number one sold for $1 million. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't think it, I don't think it happened in the eighties, seventies. You know Mm -hmm, what I'm saying? mm -hmm. Like when we were growing up, it was like, oh, with enough time has passed now action comics, number one from 1938 on the larger world scale hey this comic book sold for one million dollars this is an important historical artifact whatever and like i said i like to see that sort of celebration but i'm also trying to be really aware like this is all scam this is scammy we're walking around right now yeah dude you want to know the example it was like proven because a few years ago there was a story where a copy of like super mario brothers for the nintendo sold mm-hmm. for a million dollars or something like a 9.9 graded box unopened of nintendo game mario but mm-hmm. then people looked into it and they're like wait the person who bid on that works for the company that set it up to auction on purpose it's all scammy inflation oh, bullshit they did a little scam loop huh so like when i see like i understand the comic book collecting market i i mm-hmm. i know what it what i'm into which is mm-hmm. not the single issues. I'm not into people, you know, people go and they find the issues and they're going to buy, sell, trade, all that stuff. I can't do that side of it. But at these conventions, now I'm starting to see video games are getting looped into that. I'm talking mm-hmm. video game yeah. in boxes yeah. there, you know, or like Adam's uh, Conan 4K yeah. set that just came out. There are people that bought mm-hmm. it and they're never going to open it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, you lost me at that point. I'm already, mm-hmm. I'm already going to hit 40. We've mm-hmm. only got a couple more decades left on this earth. I'm not trying to, <laughs> what am I saving for? What am I saving for? I right, can't right, fucking right. buy a house. Like 
boomers stole everything from us. There's nothing, you know, what, what market am I going to sneak into? There's no way in, I'm going to buy cheapy versions of the stuff I like and enjoy it. And in the mm -hmm. times where mm -hmm. I'm, where I can't do anything, but buy the expensive version of the stuff, like, yes, I could get another Conan, the barbarian action figure, but believe me, I looked around. This is the best one. Believe me, believe me, <laughs> I look and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna open it and yeah. enjoy it. And I'm not, I'm not in it for the investment. So a bunch of different reasons for why that stuff's happening. Yeah. A lot of it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. A lot of it could be cool because it's like mm -hmm. more attention on the stuff we love, but totally. you know, you, the good news is, is you don't need to buy that physical comic. If you want to read that comic where invincible mm -hmm. meets Spider-Man, right? It's mm -hmm. on the website. You can read it. It's right. on Marvel. Well, yeah. Com, I also read it know? through the LA public library. They have the digital version. Yep. Like it's right. there. Yep. I can read it. It's just, there's something yep. about holding it. And that's what they're farming on is just like, Oh, this guy just wants to hold the physical copy of it. Right. right. Yeah. And that sucks. That really, really sucks because I, it's, it's just another barrier to the things that we love. And like, I feel mm -hmm. like streaming services have already kind of like screwed us over. Adam, is there, have you noticed anything like that in the, in the Blu-ray market? Are you in the, or the 4k market? Is it like, Oh yeah. Being overly, overly totally. charged too? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. It happens. I mean, it's, and it's not even just like, like it, it's like Hector's saying, it's comic books, it's video games, it's any sort of movie memorabilia, posters, one sheets, you know, any of that sort of marketing mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, movies for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. as soon as Disney announced that Disney Movie Club was gonna be shutting down in May, mm -hmm. people were yeah. buying up all those Blu-rays. If you wanna own a copy of the Mighty Ducks trilogy, they're going for like $150 for all three Jesus on eBay. Lord. They sell them for $10 on Disney Movie Club. <sighs> ten dollars mm -hmm. until they sold out now now you obviously can't get them so yeah it's happening all over the place with with blu-ray media you know like 28 days later that's a movie that's been out of print free willy is a movie that's been out of print for years mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know you can get them you can probably find them on ebay but they are going for 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 huge loads of money hundreds of dollars and mm -hmm. i'm i'm like hector if I'm gonna buy, if I'm gonna go out of my way to buy a copy of Mighty Ducks on Blu-ray, I'm not flipping it on eBay. I'm flipping it into my right. player and watching it. Yeah, I have yeah. no desire. I really, truthfully, like don't have a desire to buy anything and hold on to it and keep it unopened. I just don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, if I'm gonna yeah. spend the time yeah. to, you know, like I bought mm -hmm. Lawrence of Arabia on 4K blu-ray the steelbook edition that thing is mm -hmm. constantly out of print out of stock out of print mm -hmm. out of stock it comes back only every so often the minute that it was available i bought it not to just have it on my shelf in shrink wrap like what right. the fuck is the point mm -hmm. so yeah and i know i know companies have tried their best to try to crack down on that mm -hmm. i know shout factory whenever they put out new remasters of movies for pre-order and people respond and say like, look, there's like 50 listings of these things on eBay. They go mm -hmm. and they they can't, they try to find out who the identities of those people are and they cancel their pre-orders. Mondo does that too. They they do their best to try, you know, it's impossible to, to be 100% accurate, but yeah. I appreciate that at least companies are trying to curb that because mm -hmm. I know, they know, they're aware that fans want to own those things, not just mm -hmm. to hold on to them and keep them in plastic, they want yeah. to display them. They want to put them up. They want to watch them. They want to experience them with their friends. So, you know, it's just like, it's, a, and it's, it's a lot, a lot of it is stuff that happens to be like a collector set, you know, like mm -hmm. my Friday the 13th Blu-ray collection set that I bought, that thing was like unavailable for a long time. And so people were price gouging it on eBay. Now it is available. And then, or I don't know if it's currently, but at one point it was available again. So it's really, really frustrating that there are those people that are banking on, yeah. you know, kind of making a dime off of people's love of something, which, you know, mm -hmm. Hollywood's been doing that for years, but it's yeah, frustrating yeah. to see that, People, normal people like us, take advantage of other normal people like us by trying to price gouge all these things, and it, it's yeah. just a bummer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I wish that wasn't yeah. the case. And I try to do my best to buy the things that I really, really want day one. Mm -hmm. You know, even slip covers, slip covers yes. for Blu-rays, go for um, huge amounts of money. Spaceballs. Yeah, there was a yeah. 4K remaster done, I think, three years ago, and th they were bought up like day one. Those slip covers go for $200. Oh, Lord. The fucking 
That's insane. Slip over the Blu-ray. Cardboard. It's that cardboard. psychotic out there that I'm like, come <sighs> on, man. Like, that's I, just I, dumb. Yeah. This especially doesn't make sense to me, whereas I don't know why these movie studios, Warner Brothers, Universal, Disney, that own all of this IP, haven't set up a system, a warehouse in California somewhere to be like- How hard can it be? Go to mm-hmm. the website, print to order, like order it and we will print it a specific movie that you want. Yeah. We'll get you mm-hmm. a Blu-ray disc. You set up how you want. Do you want the 4K disc as well? That's going to be this mm-hmm. much extra. Yeah. You want the DVD? You don't need the DVD? Okay, that's this less. Do you want mm-hmm. a digital copy as well? Boom, 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 boom. Here it is. Shipped to order. It's going to be $50. It's going to be $100. But mm-hmm. Disney pockets the money. Why wouldn't they set up a warehouse that's just automated printing Blu-rays and printing slip covers with the correct sizes of the discs and ship know. it to you? Like... They need to figure out how much that would cost them and do it because nerds like us are sitting there like, we just want to buy these movies from you. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll yeah. go into the vault. Oh, this one's limited edition. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. I'll buy it off of you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to have to order it from Japan or, or never have access to it or have some guy on eBay try to sell me 28 days later on DVD for $1,000. <laughs> because they're just price gouging. Like that's like whoever yeah. owns the rights to 28 days later, I think it's universal. I might be wrong. Should have this system in place. You could just go to their website and be like, I'll take 28 mm-hmm. days later on Blu-ray, please. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's 20th Thank century, you. which I guess now would be Disney. There you go. Again, oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. there's, there's just leaving Shouldn't money on the hard. table is the term. Shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. You guys are Disney. You guys are Warner Brothers. You guys are universal. Yeah. You guys are, you know, mm-hmm. Sony, whatever. Yeah, like absolutely. the first studio that does that, I feel like, it's just going to start raking in the dough, you know, as <laughs> people can start yeah, customizing so. their little, Oh, I got a 4k, I, so. I got a 3d, I got a Blu-ray, I got a DVD mm-hmm, of my mm-hmm. favorite yeah. movie. And man, I mean, to your point, like how amazing would it be? Like you, just like you're saying right now, if we could go in and we could be like, I want the 4k and I want the 3d, I don't need a Blu-ray. I don't need a DVD. I don't need a digital None. code even mm-hmm. just None. give me those two. Yeah. Let me choose the None. slip cover. Ooh, all I need. Ship it. Yeah. 45, 50 yep. bucks. All right, whatever. Yep. I'm happy. None. I got exactly None. what I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What Welcome I to the Sony Movie Club. Like that, it's it's cool. It's, <laughs> it's cool as hell. <laughs> it's yeah. rad. Yeah, I I, and I, I yeah. feel like uh, there might be somebody to push that because I I do know that yeah, us least three we need to each work at Warner Brothers, yeah, know, Disney, right? Paramount, Universal. <laughs> we need to, and then we'll we'll merge them and then break it apart so that no, it, like, nobody like, can stick it together anymore. But like Augustine said, if one of them does it first, the rest of them will follow. Mm-hmm. If one of I them so. proves it to be a successful business model and Ryan yeah. in the chat saying it's going to be paramount. They're pretty f- forward thinking with this stuff. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, that makes sense. I'll tell you what paramount didn't put out bumblebee on 3d blu-ray. So I don't mm. trust them, Ryan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. But the, I think 3d is a whole different conversation. Because I know, that's a but whole unsupported be... format at this point. Sure. Um, but there was, unless... I think, there, was, there was just an interview with Ang Lee, I think, too, who mm-hmm. I think was Ang Lee, where he was talking about how he's frustrated with the way studios are handling 3D and that there's like no yes. proper distribution route for it and all kinds of mm-hmm. stuff, which yes. is a bummer Ang. because Ang Lee is like one of the only five people left in Hollywood who loves shooting in 3D. And it's such a bummer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. The thing that makes yeah. me a little bit happy is that in my in my um, quest for collecting records, I also have been going into 3D into movie stores. And cool. I have been noticing and talking to the people at the movie stores that they have been noticing an uptick of the people who are coming into their stores. Absolutely. Good. Renting Absolutely. movies, buying movies, Good. and all that stuff. And I also recently had a conversation with coworkers. I had no idea that they had also just started their mm. Blu-ray DVD collection as well. Yeah. And so I feel like there's a shift happening. And whatever company does jump on this shift this early on, I think they're the ones who are gonna who are gonna skyrocket because Mm-hmm. And even just from inside the chat, just watching people talk about this, it's people are sick of it. Like people yeah. just want to have what they want to have and totally. not pay for 30 different services that cost them $200 a month yeah. to scroll for a half hour to try to find something to watch. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, like I have, I have my streaming services. I kind of made a trade that if I give everyone access to my streaming services, I can upgrade the mm-hmm. internet to the most expensive one that I can, that I can get. I'm three mm-hmm. steps from buying everyone a Blu-ray player and just telling them to come in here and grab stuff. So I can yeah. cancel yeah. all of them because I'm yeah. like, nah. You, yeah. need to go. you, you want to watch go. a show? I'll buy the Blu-ray yeah. for you. It's mm-hmm. and yep. it, at the long run, it ends up being cheaper. Yeah. So why bother? It really yep. does. You know? It really yep. does. Yeah. Yep. 
Dang. Uh, Laggy's asking, I need, some, it. I need some disc players. Is there a player that plays UHD and Blu-ray? Uh, yeah, if you don't need 3D, then a PS5 will work fine. Xbox mm-hmm. One S. Um, mm-hmm. If you want... A blue, it, depending on how much you're willing to spend, you know, I have the UB820 Blu ray player. There's, there are, I think there's like a 420 model that is cheaper than that. Um, Panasonic is, is a really good brand to look into, but yeah, there's, there's quite a few still left on the market. And that's the other thing, too. If more people start buying physical media and they're at least willing to future proof themselves a little bit instead of buying a DVD player just buy you know a 4k player or if you mm-hmm. want to buy blu-rays yeah. just buy the 4k player because that yeah. will then entice more companies to build newer models to build mm-hmm. software updates for for older models i have the uba20 and i'm not sure if it has had a software upgrade in in recent months i love that player i think it it plays 4k and blu-ray discs beautifully 3d disc beautifully mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. i also don't want that to go away because if physical media for film starts to fall, it's kind of like the same thing would happen with vinyl. Record players went away. That means that Blu-ray mm-hmm. players will go away. And I mm-hmm. want to have some options in 10 years, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. That, that was my exact reason for starting my whole collection and why I want to get the Ninja Turtles comics and stuff like that. Because I just, I, I feel yeah. like there is, I, I feel done so dirty because streaming had so much promise at the beginning, specifically mm. Netflix. Like when Netflix yeah. first started streaming, first the disc idea I thought was incredible. Oh, and so everybody smart. else thought it was incredible. Like everybody getting their movies through through the the mail was incredible. Mm-hmm. But then the streaming happened, and then they let you share accounts, and like they had all these great movies before all the licenses and all that stuff got all crazy and tangled up in that. And now I feel like that promise of like the the cool future that we we're supposed to have is just gone is gone mm. by greed and it's just it's really as ryan would say it's real stinky yeah. uh, <laughs> i don't i don't really i don't i don't like the way this smells and so i'm just gonna pull out yeah. and uh start collecting and yeah. cater my own library because this yeah. is just of everything of music and and uh movies ryan unicorn just said in the everything just said in the chat yeah. room uh is this a great idea for a seminar or something why the fuck have we not been pitching physical media panels at cons that's, that's what no, we should be said, doing that's our pitch that's our he pitch. said is this a great idea seminar or something good lord are y'all cooking today oh. yeah this is the seminar <laughs> yeah this we is the good idea but seriously these are the panels that we should be pitching to conventions mm-hmm. yep. yeah yeah good idea yeah, KP Dubs, oh, it smells man. like Disney Orlando. You're right. So here's what happened. We got up at like 6.30 in the morning, right? We get into mm-hmm. our like lift. We're heading over to Magic Kingdom. You have to get on a monorail to get to the park, first of all, which is fine. Even after you get dropped off or if you park or whatever, you have to take a monorail to get. And so we're all loading up on this monorail at like 7 in the morning. The park doesn't open for an hour. And as we're all lined up, just people just stopped here because we're waiting for this monorail to like begin service. It hasn't started at seven in the morning yet. And there's like one or two people like shuffling everybody and these dudes super early in the morning. There's just a pile of shit there. We have to walk past it slowly. And I was like, oh, it's so early. Nobody caught that and washed it down yet. And my first thought was, you would have never seen this in Anaheim. Let me tell you what, this is (laughs) abhorrent. This is disgusting. I hoped it was a wild dog yeah. in those Florida swamps because yeah. there was miles and miles of nothing out there before we even got to the monorail to get to the thing. And like, you can also take a ferry over that swamp land to get to Magic Kingdom. And I was like, this is so swamp. It's crazy. It smelled awful. That uh-huh. stink was in my mouth the morning as I'm like, Ugh, I don't even, I'm not hungry. That was how I started my this magical day, my day at Magic Kingdom. This ruined my ruined day. It. Yeah, you know it. what though? I I did hear something that there is an issue with people pooping at the Disney parks. I don't know if it was specifically at Disney World or at Disneyland. Oh God! But it was somewhere on the, so. on social media where um there had been like a a worrying awful. rise in people pooping uh, at uh, Rise of the Resistance because the lines were so long, and people have been oh, waiting God. for so long that people were they like turning the a line? corner, popping a squat. And stinking up the joints. It's it's, that is it's wild, disgusting. man. Do people sounds, not yeah. know you could tap your neighbor on the shoulder and go, hey, I have to hit the restroom, but can you please hold my place in line and then I'm gonna come I, back? I, I, what is the other person gonna not. say? No. Apparently not. No. Apparently it makes not. no difference. Yeah, hold your place in I line. Know, We're all gonna go together. 
Okay, if you guys say no, yeah. I'm going to shit in the corner right here. You want me to shit in the corner, Haas, or can I go to the bathroom and come back? <laughs> and also, people don't go to Disneyland with yeah. other people. There's no party there that you can. Yeah, right. Hey, hold exactly. my spot. I'll be right back. This is psychopathic yep. behavior. This is great. Yeah, but it's nerd, wild, man. Nerd, nerd Large in the chat says it was a Florida man. And then there's a little <laughs> poop emoji. Oh, yeah, Florida I see. Man. I see. Yeah, that Could've makes been. sense. That uh, makes sense. A legendary. Yeah. Elusive the legendary Florida man. Elusive Florida man. The elusive elusive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I got a crying oh, sorry, doggy Ashley. that needs to go. Uh, speaking Ashley of poopies. Says, Damn, uh, I just just started my lunch. Thanks, guys. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> sorry, Ashley. I'm I mean, sorry. it wasn't. It was a delicious yogurt full of probiotics. Yeah, I don't know it what was so good. Really? It was it was a fresh <laughs> bowl of Yakult. Uh, delicious <laughs> <laughs> oh my delicious lord probiotics everything this is you fun need. guys this is great yeah i'm gonna this open was, up my conan toy now <laughs> yeah for sure make sure you um, live stream that hector as you un as you unpack that yeah so. you should do an instagram on your, live on your or instagram. something yeah yeah maybe yeah, i will then maybe i won't do yeah. it right now but maybe i will do it later yeah. that's pretty cool yeah, sure. there sure. you go he's got, he's got two swords and a dagger <laughs> damn <laughs> Hector's yeah. dagger just went full <laughs> throttle. <laughs> uh, but guys, thank you so much for 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 hanging out with us, for watching and for listening. Uh, yeah, as always, you know, support physical media if you want to jump into the Discord. We're in there almost every single day talking with the community about movies that we love or movies that you should be checking out on physical media. Uh, also comic books, all kinds of stuff. We're sharing everything, anything and everything. Uh, Hector, have a really fun trip. Be safe. Thanks, yeah, guys. dude. If you don't I'm come so back, jealous. we won't blame you. Just find some yeah, good I internet so you can do stuff you. remotely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We'll it. sell off your comic book collection and then send you the money. Uh, yeah, Augustine, that's fine. Augustine, yeah. you have the best birthday. It'll be okay. I'll be, I'll be good. I'll be. Good. It'll be. It'll be okay. You'll survive. <laughs> yeah. You'll make it to forty point okay. one. I I'll promise. Okay. <laughs> I'll meet you guys on the other side of forty. How about that? Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Guys, check out everything else cool. that we're watching on the channel, both channels. So much fun stuff. Check out the Patreon, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.